He just broke the 3x3 world record average with 5.09 seconds, absolutely sending Max Park to the Shadow Realm. No, I'm just kidding, Max. If anyone can come back and beat this, it's you. By 0.01 seconds, Max, really? You couldn't even let the guy hold the record for four months? Welcome back to World Record Review, where we review world record. Max Park got the world record average with 5.08 seconds. That's gonna get a 5.08 stars out of five for me. Even if you didn't know that this happened and I asked you who holds the world record average for three x three, it's pretty safe to guess Max Park because he could just break it on any weekend. Now, before we get into the breakdown of these solves, this world record was so close to not happening. Of course, the final solve being 4.80, if it was as high as 4.82, he actually would have tied the old world record of 5.09. And fun fact, if he had gotten his best results on the last solve, it would have been a 4.99 average, which makes the first ever sub 5 average, but that didn't happen. And also something else that didn't happen is Timon almost got a 4.74 average, but he plus 2 to the 3.75, but also you can't really say he almost got the 4.74 average, because he never had a 3.75, so he had a lot less pressure going into the last two solves, but anyway, that's a topic for another video. But the other Another reason this almost wasn't a record, watch this. I don't know how or whose fault it is, but somehow the timer got reset after the last solve, and this was during the celebration and before everything that needed to be done had been done, which is writing down the time and having both the competitor and the judge sign for the solve. I have heard so many stories from so many people of forgetting to check the score sheet or signing for the solve and somehow not having it count because they messed up that part. Guys, before you celebrate, make sure your solve counts. You can watch me demonstrate a masterclass of this. In my mind, there was one thought and one thought only. Sign that scorecard. So we have Timon and Max Park in a race for the first sub-5 average with 5.09 and 5.08. There's actually a pretty high chance that the next world record average is actually sub-5, which is crazy to think about. Last year, I asked you guys when do you think the first sub-5 average will happen, and a lot of you left your predictions, but it's been a while and maybe you've changed your mind, so let me know in the comments now when do you think the first official sub-5 average will happen. Now let's break down what Max did in these solves. The scramble is done with white on top and green on front. For the first solve, Max does the blue cross. Okay, before we get to that, look at the red cross. I'm surprised he didn't do red, but I know there are some cross colors Max doesn't do, and I can't remember if red is one of them. Maybe I'll try red cross later, but Max did the blue cross, so there's the blue red piece. Here is the yellow one, which you can solve next to red in one move. Then there is the orange and white, and you can deal with this in a few ways, but the one that he went for is thinking that orange and blue needs to go in with R prime F R. So instead of doing that first, if you actually just put an F move in the beginning, that will knock the white piece over to the left side to be solved then in one move, and then solve the cross. So this pair was planned in inspection and done right now, and then he tracks the white-red pieces. So that ends up actually just in a paired position. Now from here, you could just insert it like this, that does run into a little issue of not being able to really find a full pair in this position. What Max does instead is he inserts this with a double rotation into the back. Now that's not the best if you're at this level and should be able to see these back slots, but as a general rule, it's not too bad when you're forced to have two front slots filled, because if you stay in this position, it can be a pretty high risk if you don't end up being able to find the pieces you want. From here, the fastest pair to solve is red-yellow, which is like that, and then insert. But Max solves the yellow-orange one first, and he pairs them up like this and takes them out. Now here, he does something really smart and see if you can find it. Instead of inserting this pair, he just solves this pair first, because this is a great five-move pair, and if you insert this one, you end up with a much worse case. So he just solves this first, and then he can just insert this one. Now he has the anti-soon OLL. I don't know if he actually thought about this, but there are two ways to do it, and one is with this algorithm here, and one is with this algorithm here. The one you want to use, which is the one that he did, is this one, because it puts the block in a vertical position, which means it's going to get saved. And by doing this, he ends up with an A-perm, which is a great PLL. Oh, wait. Max does it with single flicks. Ugh. 
Since he doesn't do double flex, I feel like I might be able to do eight perms faster than Max, but that's a testament to how fast he turns that I'm not even sure. All right, before moving to solve two, I have to see what would have happened on red cross because this is just such a good cross. So obviously it's solve yellow and green here. Then we have white and blue. Um, uh, so you could do this, save this pair and solve it. And then, okay, we got this pair. Then we got this pair, uh, this one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Max! Why does this happen every single time I break down the world record average? Okay, I am better than Max Park confirmed. In the second solve, of course, Max does the green cross. There are already two solved and this one goes in in one move. So it's really easy. And then there's also the yellow one here. Now what he does is he takes it out like this so that it's on top now. And then he does D prime to insert this with a nice finger trick and then D. And that sets up this as the first pair. I think he didn't want to overcomplicate things, but he could have made a quick X cross on this as well. When I saw this yellow green piece attached to the correct corner, the way that I thought to solve this and keep the corner attached is like this. Move it over here and then insert it like this. And that puts it here with the corner, but the edge is not correct. Okay, but what if before I do that, I just make sure that the yellow orange edge is in the spot that will force it to be with this. And that's actually right here. So what I'm gonna do is L prime U prime L and that's it. And now if I just do everything I plan to do, so like I'm gonna solve the white here and I'm gonna solve this one, how I said, it's just going to put them all together. That only adds three moves to the cross solution, but gives you an extra pair, which means I basically had a three move pair. Oh, and look at that, there's another three move pair. I am better than Max Parkin for anyway, back to what Max did. So he has this first pair. And the rest of this is so unlucky. Look at that pair. Look at that pair. This pair is so hard to see. I don't blame him for not seeing that. He ends up taking out this pair first, like that. And then from here, there are two correct answers on how to pair this one. Can you figure it out? The worst way you can do it is like this. And you'll see why when I show you the better ways. One okay way to solve it is by rotating and inserting them like this. The benefit is you get to take this pair out of the slot that it was in that was horrible, but you make this one bad and this one needs a rotation still. The best way to solve this is like this. Pair them up that way and you force yellow red to get paired together. Not very easy to see and that's not what Max did. Max did something good as well. How Max paired these was by forcing the right slot to be used and that was like this. Then by inserting, you then have a slightly nicer pair for this one. Okay, but then he inserts it with F moves, which is not the best thing to do because then you end up with this one needing a rotation. So he solves them like that to pair them up and then insert into the back. Now he has this pair and he does it like this. Rotate and pair them and insert. There is a way to solve it from here that is three quarter turns shorter and causes the cross on top to get solved. And that is like this. I don't always recommend this solution because the wide moves can make it hard for look ahead, but it is last pair and it does solve the edge orientation. So I think it was just better to do this, but it ended up okay. He ends up with a good OLL and this part, okay, this part blows my mind. Watch this. He does it like this. And instead of using like the really nice finger trick that makes it all kind of regripless on the left hand, he does it like this. Regrip, which is like, what? Why'd you do that? But then he stays in the regrip somehow, knowing it's going to be an A perm, which is the only PLL that needs this regrip. And then he just does the A perm and cancels the regrip. Like, what? I don't know how he knew that. Max Park is better than me, confirmed. On the third solve, Max does the white cross. We have the orange, green, and red pieces connected, and the blue piece has a corner attached to it, so this clearly looks like it can make an X cross. All right, the next section I'm going to explain for what he does here is all planned in inspection. So just keep that in mind. Here we solve green, then solve orange, and notice that the orange blue edge gets solved during that, just remember that. And then now we solve the red one and insert red and blue. Okay, now here we have a corner solved, and an edge solved. This is not an X cross, but this is a pseudo X cross. The reason we call it that is because if you're smart about the next moves you do, this basically is an X cross, a corner and an edge solved, because you just have to solve another corner and edge to make two pairs solved. And that's exactly what he does here. We have this corner that needs to go with the solved edge, and this edge that needs to go with the solved corner. So he actually pairs them up, the orange, blue, and red, blue pieces, and then 
inserts them over here to the orange blue corner slot and the blue red edge slot for a pseudo pair. And now he does this and look at that. That is two F12 pairs solved. This is pseudo slotting. So be honest guys, Max Park doing pseudo slotting. Does that not scare you? All right, next up we have this pair and this pair and Max does this one first, which kind of baffles me because it's not a great pair and this one is great and would set this one up slightly differently, but oh well. So what he does is like this and then inserts it. And then we have this pair. Here he gets one of the worst OLL cases, which he solves with soon and then F sexy F prime and then ends up with a Y perm, which is not great, but also not bad either. You could have recognized it would have been a diagonal corner swap PLL from right here by noticing these two are the same and this one is opposite for the corners. And then you could do a different algorithm instead, such as lefty double sledge and then double sexy move. That does give you a Z perm, not the greatest, but on average, it's giving you something better than a Y perm because this is the worst thing that could happen. Corners will be solved, so it, chances are it was a U perm. I don't know, maybe he knows about this and didn't do it because he knew it'd be a Z perm. I have no clue how much he looks at in these solves. Now we're gonna come back to this spot. I just wanna show you what would have happened if he had done this pair instead, because it just seems more obvious to me. And I'm sure he could tell, because even I can tell, if you do this, you end up with white on top for this one, which ends up giving you tons of options for the last pair. So obviously you could take it out like that, but what you, oh, wait, that's pretty good too. No, but what I was thinking was you take it out this way because that forces the bad edge in here. And then, oh, look at that, you get an OLL skip. I am better than for this scramble, Max does green cross, and this one actually has a one move square, which solves the white red corner. So we're gonna need to solve the white red edge as well for an X cross. Next, he aligns the yellow piece to be solved later, and then notices that to solve orange right here, we could actually solve the white red edge at the same time and see if you can figure out how this is done. So instead of solving the white red right away, we're gonna put it on the opposite side of where it should go. Then when you insert orange with an R2, it'll fix that one. Then solve the rest of this cross and there's the X cross. Next, we have this pair probably planned during inspection. And then we have these two here and this one and this one here. Of course, you could do that. It's a little hard to see, but that would have been the best thing to do to avoid a rotation. Next, what Max does is just solves these two and then these two, okay. Just like I showed earlier for this case, he could do this with the wide move solution. It does end up with a dot case. Uh, I don't know what Alec uses for this, but it actually would have been nice to have a U perm to end this. But instead he does a cube rotation and a much longer solution like this, and then ends up with a good OLL, so that's fine. And then gets this J perm and uses this algorithm for it. What Max, is this really necessary? Okay, let's give this a shot. Um, okay, you know what, Max? That was actually really cool. On the final solve, Max does the green cross. Very easy cross. Of course, if you're trying to get world record, you will need some luck. So he does the white one here first, and then these two together. Now, if you didn't plan first pair, this is kind of a tough situation to be in. That's a terrible pair. And that's why planning your first pair in inspection is so important at this level. He noticed this one in inspection and so solved it right away like that. Next, he solves the white red pair. I don't know what it is about Max always solving pairs that are a little harder than the other ones. Like this one's easier, this one's easier. I guess he notices if it's easier then you can easily track it for later, but solving either one of these is still pretty easy to track this one. It's not like anything's ending up in the back slot when you do these first, like I, I don't know, but whatever. He does this one first and then solves it into the back. Next, he has this one and he wants to put it into here. Now, the way he does it, sort of interesting. Um, you could just do this from the back. Like, I think that's totally fine. But what he does instead is keyhole. He does D to move the corner spot here so he can insert the corner here. But instead of just inserting the corner, he actually rotates and then solves it like this. And that doesn't even set up the final pair to be amazing or anything. Like, I, I, do, I don't really understand what happened here. But anyway, he ended up with a great OLL and a J perm, so he probably planned all of that. So I guess we learned today that Max Park can do pseudo slotting and that is absolutely terrifying. But what is very comforting to me is his two best solves ended in J perms. Once again, we have learned, confirmed, and proven that J perm is the best.